Do not tell me what I can and can't do. Rivers seem to be in the background when it comes to about the conversation of big bodies of water. Those who take the top spot seem to be lakes and oceans, but there are some cool things that you can do in the river that you cannot do on those other bodies of water. And one of those things is lazy river tubing or lazy river rafting. That is when you can ride down the current, enjoying the sun, a drink in hand with absolutely no worries except for a lot of unexpected worries that we faced when we tried it for the first time. What is lazy river tubing in the first place? And what are those unexpected things that we faced? Good news, I'll answer all those questions right now. Welcome to my channel where I take on different challenges and adventures. I'll tell you my personal thoughts and experiences and hopefully encourages you to try new adventures yourself. Now, if that sounds like something that bakes your cake, maybe consider liking and subscribing, but let's talk about lazy river tubing. Now, what in the gosh darn is lazy river tubing in the first place? Being a Canadian who has lived near water, lakes, oceans, and dealing with snow, there are many different kinds of tubing. You might have heard of water tubing or just regular tubing where you're being dragged behind a boat and hopefully you're trying to stay on for your life. Very fun childhood moments with that. There's just normal hill tubing or snow tubing where you're at the top and you go down all the way to the bottom with your donut or with your tube. Or during the summer, you might find these water parks in which you're in your tube. Tube. Same concept, top, ooh, down to the bottom. Currently something is called kite tubing, which I definitely want to see how it compares with kiteboarding. Lazy river tubing, or just river tubing, is very straightforward. You've got your flotation device, a donut, a pineapple, which is what we use, and you're just floating down the river, allowing the river current itself to push you into the direction that you need to go. Depending on the river, it might be very relaxing, or sometimes it might not be as lazy, which is why sometimes I just refer it to river rafting. Because if the current starts to get strong enough, you're getting into river rafting category. Or if it gets really, really bad and really dangerous, that is white water river rafting, which is not what you want to be doing with just a simple donut. You know, in water, when it starts to appear opaque and white, and you'll start seeing those white caps on the top of the water. If you see that in the entire river, or that entire section of the river kind of looks like that, there's a good chance that is white water. Rafting in certain sections can be fatal and dangerous, but that is why we want to do the lazy river rafting. Now, what's the difference? Usually your floating device is gonna be a little bit different. With rafting, you have this big, steady, fancy raft with oars and everything. Lazy river rafting, you hopefully you can just use some donuts, sit on it, and you should be good. To make sure if you're doing lazy river rafting or if you're doing white water rafting, definitely don't wanna screw those two up. You can do a simple Google search and look for businesses because if there is white water rafting, either there's gonna be no swimming or there's gonna be a business that is selling some sort of white water rafting service. That sounds like something that interests you. I've links down below to Groupon that you can check this out for yourself. There are some businesses that do sell the lazy river rafting experience where you can rent out some fancy tube that looks way more like a raft. You have your paddles and then you kind of just enjoy the current and the experience. But I'm also gonna be talking about the rebels, those who are like myself who didn't want to rent a relaxing experience we wanted to get it the cheapest and see what happens. Do you wanna try it yourself with some helpful tips, especially if you're one of those rebellious types that's just gonna use a tube from the dollar store and just wants to make that experience a little bit more of the rafting than the lazy part. Here are a couple of tips and tricks for that experience. Step one, you need to find a popular river. It doesn't have to be super deep, like you can walk across the river. That's probably a good chance because then you can set up a lot better. If you look it up on Google, for example, and it's defined as a river, it has a current, which is what you need. It doesn't have to be extremely strong because like I said, one of the downfalls is it is dependent on the river itself. If it's regularly used by the public for recreational purposes, such as swimming, that is a very, very good chance that it's going to be safe. But you should check and you should ask. But some places do sell the lazy river rafting experience. It does solve a lot of the problems that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on with this experience that you can solve. But this one, like I said, is a little bit more convenient. It comes to about $35 plus, depending on where you are and what you're getting out of it. You'll get your fancy tube that looks like a raft. 
you'll have your oars, and you also have your life jacket. If you want to be an explorer like myself, all I did was went to the dollar store and got a tube, just some cheap thing that you can reuse multiple times, way cheaper than $35. But one additional thing you're going to need to buy from the dollar store are the patches. The whole patches are just like band-aids for flotation devices. Because of the height of the river, there's a chance that you're going to be very, very low. You might hit a stick. You might just scrape across the rocks like we did for a while. And what we had to do is someone had to put a finger on that hole for about 20 minutes until we stopped by a family that had a patch themselves, which was very, very nice. Thank you. But it is way more fun to use one of those dinky tubes because you have to dodge, you have to weave, you have to direct. You feel like an explorer going down this river. Now, what kind of tube do you want to get? What I recommend is a rectangular tube or one of them that does not have a middle in the bottom, which is like your traditional donut. The reason why is, is some rivers, like I said, the water's really low and you're going to sit down and then your bum is just going to scrape on the rocks and it's just going to keep hitting the bottom. That's not really comfortable. Also, when you're directing, it's going to be a lot more difficult in order to control your tube when you're in this donut. Depending on the water temperature of when you're going, you could be sitting on it and you might have to deal with that cold water on you for a long time. And you can have multiple riders just like we did. We had two people on one tube. I think that's just more of an explorer fun adventure. Now bring a paddle system. Notice I said paddle system and not paddles. So what we did is we brought flip flops and we just put them on our hands like webbed hands and swam like this. It actually worked really well, cost efficient, didn't really have to bring anything extra and it was really fun. You want to figure out where you're starting and where you are ending because that is going to make a big difference. So here are a couple things you need to figure out. If you're going to take public transportation, if you're going to drive there, and if you are driving there, are you going to drive at the start and then walk from the end back? Or are you going to park in the middle? You might want to bring a bike pump so you just have all the air out and then you put all the air in because it's going to be a lot easier than going. <laughs> and now you have the tools and hopefully a basic understanding of lazy river rafting and to see if that is something for you. But now if you want to know what my actual experiences are, pros and cons, and get a more of what the experience is actually like, I'm going to start right now with the pros and cons. The cons. Uh, uh. Rivers might not just be 10 minutes down from where you live. You might have to go a little bit further and you're going to spend a long time in the sun. If you're someone who gets easily burnt, you can just bring a shirt and clothing or you just bring a lot of sunscreen, but you are just going to be in the sun for a long time. That is kind of part of it. And it really depends on the river. It might not be deep at all, such as we had certain spots where our bum was just hitting the ground or we actually had to get up and walk down to get to the next section of the river. Or some places were really slow, other places were really fast. The diversity was actually really fun. It was really good. But I can see if you have a river that's just too low the entire time, you might be walking. They have one section around the tube and it's more walking than tubing. And the pros, hmm. it can be very relaxing if that's something that you're looking for. Relaxing, but more of an active relaxing. Passive relaxing, you're kind of just sitting there and you're not doing nothing. Active relaxing, meaning you still have to direct the tube. You have to choose where you're going. A lot of rivers aren't straight. And also depending on the river, it might not actually be relaxing. It might actually be an adventure because we made it a lot more difficult. We had two people on the same tube. We didn't have a paddle system. We had to dodge. We had to weave. It curves. It speeds up. It slows down. There are logs in the way. Sometimes you have to walk. And the difficulty that we put on ourselves made it way more fun and way more enjoyable. It's like an explorer adventure. Very similar to a kid. When you go to a new spot for the first time, there's a lot of things to see. If you're like me, when you're on the water, like a kayak or canoe, the first thing you want to go see is any other body of land just to explore and see where it is, just to get there. Ooh, a couple of thoughts that are in my head. Here we go. That childhood feeling that I was just talking about, it feels really, really good. Bringing something out from your childhood, something that's so basic and instinctual that you just want to explore and see these new things. It feels really good. It was really, really fun to do that. And I really liked that. I really appreciated that part. And it wasn't as lazy as I thought it was going to be. Like we had to dodge, we had to weave, we had to work together, we had to dodge rocks. There were logs and sticks that were poking out. Some parts were way stronger than others and some parts were a lot slower, very relaxed, and we had to walk. But that mix of variety was very, very fun. And the challenge was really fun. This is definitely something you can add if you're going to this body of water anyways. You do want to be careful on the river, but it's definitely something that can enhance an experience that you're going there for anyways, 
or a small different experience for a different group of people, depending on if you're going as a group or as a family. And it doesn't really matter about the temperature as well, because depending on what you're wearing, if it's sunny or especially if things are starting to get a little bit colder and you're not able to do as much as the summer fun experiences that you'd normally be able to do, this is something we could just go back, find a different river and experience this again. If you want to find adventures yourself, there are a couple of links down below for Airbnb in Groupon, which is where I find most of my experiences and it supports me and I would really appreciate that. As well as a couple of links of Amazon. So if you really want a little bit more high quality stuff, you can do that right here. Things like tubes, patches, just what you need. So that's my experience. What do you think? Have you tried it before? Are you going to try it yourself now? Have any of you tried the paid version of this lazy river rafting? or do you think you want something a little bit more extreme like white water rafting? I'm very curious and you can let me know down in the comments below or you can hit me up on social media and I will see you at the next adventure.